An excerpt from Homily on Our Lord by St. Ephraim the Syrian. But our Lord was trampled on by death, and in his turn trod out a way over death. This is he who made himself subject to and endured death of his own will, that he might cast down death against his will. For our Lord bare his cross and went forth according to the will of death. But he cried upon the cross and brought forth the dead from within Sheol against the will of death. For in that very thing by which death had slain him, in that as armor he bore off the victory over death. But the Godhead concealed itself in the manhood and fought against death. Death slew and was slain. Death slew the natural life and the supernatural life slew him. And because death was not able to devour him without the body, nor Sheol to swallow him up without the flesh, he came unto the virgin that from thence he might obtain that which should bear him to Sheol. As from beside the ass they brought for him the cult whereon he entered Jerusalem and proclaimed concealing her overthrow and the destruction of her children. With the body then that was from the virgin, he entered Sheol and plundered its storehouses and emptied its treasures. He came then to Eve, the mother of all living. This is the vine whose fence death laid open by her hands and caused her to taste of his fruits. So Eve, the mother of all living, became the wellspring of death to all living. But Mary budded forth, a new shoot from Eve, the ancient vine, and new life dwelt in her, that when death should come confidently after his custom to feed upon mortal fruits, the life that is the slayer of death might be stored up therein against him, that when death should have swallowed the fruits without fear, he might vomit them forth, and with them many. For he who is the medicine of life flew down from heaven and was mingled in the body, the mortal fruit. And when death came to feed after his custom, the life in his turn swallowed up death. This is the food that hungered to eat its eater. So then, by one fruit which death swallowed hungrily, he vomited up many lives which he had swallowed greedily. The hunger then which hurried him against one emptied out his greed which had hurried him against many. Thus death was diligent to swallow one, but was in haste to set many free. For while one was dying on the cross, many that were buried from within Sheol were coming forth at his cry. This is the fruit that cleft asunder death who had swallowed it and brought out from within it the life in quest of which it was sent. For Sheol hid away all that she had devoured, but through one that was not devoured, all that she had devoured were restored from within her. He whose stomach is disordered vomits forth both that which is sweet to him and that which is not sweet. So the stomach of death was disordered, and as he was vomiting forth the medicine of life which had sickened it, he vomited forth along with it also those lives that had been swallowed by him with pleasure. This is the son of the carpenter, who skillfully made his cross a bridge over Sheol that swallows up all, and brought over mankind into the dwelling of life. And because it was through the tree that mankind had fallen into Sheol, so upon the tree they passed over into the dwelling of life. Through the tree then, wherein bitterness was tasted, through it also was sweetness tasted, that we might learn of him that among the creatures nothing resists him. Glory be to you who laid your cross as a bridge over death, that souls might pass over upon it from the dwelling of the dead to the dwelling of life. The Gentiles praise you that your word has become a mirror for them, that in it they might see death, secretly swallowing up their lives. But graven images were being adorned by their artifices and by their adornments disfiguring their adorners. But you drew them to your cross, 
And while the beauties of the body were disfigured upon it, the beauties of the mind shone forth from it. Then, as for the Gentiles who used to go after gods which were no gods, he who was God went after them, and by his words, as by a bridle, turned them from many gods to the one. This is that mighty one whose preaching became a bridle in the jaws of the Gentiles, and led them away from idols to him that sent him. But the dead idols, with their closed mouths, used to feed on the life of their worshippers. On this account you mingled in their flesh the blood of yours, by which death was enfeebled and laid low, that the mouths of their devourers might be driven away from their lives. Also because Israel slew you, and was defiled by your blood, that idolatry that had been engrafted upon him was driven away from him on account of your blood. For he was weaned from that heathenism through your blood, because that from it he had never before been weaned.